So this tripod here costs about 50 bucks. This one is about $100. This one's also about $125, but then this one is like $3,000. So what can you get for the money when it comes to tripods? How much money should you be spending? Or if you're, if you're on a fixed budget, what can you buy for that much money? And so that's what I'm gonna try and cover today. I'm gonna try and teach you about some of the frustrations I've had when buying tripods over the years. And just getting right into it, we're gonna start cheap. So this one costs 12 bucks. It's about as cheap as you can possibly get on Amazon. It's just an iPhone tripod and it's a piece of garbage. It can only barely hold your iPhone. And uh, I mean, it does okay if that's what you're trying to do, but it'll pick up any vibrations on your tables because it's just, it's a flimsy little piece of junk. This is the next one up and it costs about $25 and it comes with its own little quick release plate, which is slightly better, but I still wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't hold the amount of weight that it advertises that it's rated for, but I'm gonna use it to demonstrate that you can also use a little piece from the previous tripod as an upgrade to be a little bit better of an iPhone holder. If you're throwing gear away or trying to upgrade, see if there's any pieces of gear you can reuse uh, or upcycle into your next pieces. And while this little $12 iPhone tripod thing is a piece of junk, what I used it for and what I got it for originally was to kind of grapple onto one of my lenses and then hold it, hold the iPhone uh, under the camera as a teleprompter. And that kind of worked okay, but it was really frustrating. It would fall sometimes. I'm surprised I never broke my iPhone. The little iPhone holder was probably the most valuable thing that I got out of this first 40 bucks of tripod that I've wasted. So those are garbage. This is, this is useful though. And so I, what I do is when I have little pieces or trinkets that might be useful in future videos or for other builds, I throw it into a little bag of all the things that are like that. And so now whenever I need to put together a little thing, I just have like this bag of little parts like iPhone holders, for example. Here's another iPhone holder. <laughs> so that's going in there. Now, next up, we have the Joby Gorillapod series, uh, which is where you first start getting into a semi-decent camera holding mechanism. This one I got for about 50 bucks. It comes with its own little quick release plate as well, which is significantly better quality than that cheap one we just threw away. But I also only find myself ever really using this for the ball head uh, because these legs, once you actually start putting a camera on it, uh, it bends and flexes too much and falls over and it's unstable. So it has a nice little ball head attachment and that's probably the most useful thing on the Joby series of uh, Gorilla Pods. I think that th these fall apart too easy and when you bend them too hard, they pop out like that and then you have to put them back together. And it's just, I find these really frustrating. So I never, and I never really use these. The Switch Pod came out and this one is a way better tripod for vlogging and stuff. This one costs hundred bucks and it's made by a creator. His name is Caleb Wojak and this thing is solid. It's, it's metal, it's not bending or flexing. It's super reliable. You can hold it at arm's length and you're, it'll keep your camera out nice and far from your face for vlogging if you have a lens that, you know, otherwise would get too close to your face. And then it just whoosh, turns into a nice little desk tripod. And this one also has a little ball head that works really, really well. And what I would do is what I do with all my other tripods, and I'll show you on this one, I would put my own quick release plate on it, which is the Manfrotto RC32 or whatever it is. There's a link to it in the description. I use, I use these type of quick release plates on freaking everything. This guy right here. So this, again, I don't recommend the Joby series of Gorilla Pods. I think they suck. Uh, the first, but their, their ball heads are pretty nice. So if you're gonna be vlogging, I would recommend the Switch Pod. It's a hundred bucks, save your money until you can get this one. Anything else, uh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna end up replacing it and therefore wasting more money than if you had just saved up and got yourself the Switch Pod. Now this one, I actually got along with a monopod from iFootage. And this, this was just the feet to the monopod. And I don't really like monopods. I don't use them um, in video because it, there's not enough stability. I want my camera not to be moving around unless I'm intentionally trying to have it move around like on a slider. So obviously I've put some stuff on it. I've added on a Hawkwoods uh, D-Tap to USB power. It'll put out 70 or 80 watts of USB power over USB-C. And then I've got a V-mount adapter from Bebob. I can just stick my camera on top of this, plug it in with a V-mount battery, like one of these from Bebob. And then I've got 
uh, solution to power any camera that takes power delivery over USB-C. You originally had to buy the iFootage monopod just to get the little feet for it, but now they sell it separately for like 70 bucks. You might even find that you don't even need a tripod until you can afford a good one. You can get by just attaching things to clamps and poles and otherwise rigging your camera on the cheap until you can afford a tripod that makes sense. So that covers really the desk tripod range that I would look at. There's only so, so much you can do with a desk tripod. The switch pod is probably one of the best, but it's also a little bit too tall for those low desk shots, at which point I would take a look at the eye footage. You don't have to rig it out the way I did. Um, all these extra pieces can get kind of expensive. Let's move on to the big boys. Now that we've got the little baby tripods out of the way, let's talk about the few things that you should probably consider when looking at a new tripod. First off, price. You obviously can't buy more tripod than you can afford unless you feel like going into debt. And for me, that's not really an option. Weight limit. If you have a camera package that's too heavy uh, or beyond the weight limit of a tripod that you really want, you shouldn't buy that tripod because you'll be disappointed. It's probably going to fail or not perform the way that you want it to perform. So always check the weight limits on your tripods. Maximum height, because sometimes a tripod is not gonna be as tall as you need it to be. The next factors get a little bit more interesting, such as ease of use. If a tripod is a huge pain in the ass to use, you're probably not gonna ever wanna actually use it and it'll just end up being a waste of money. Portability, uh, if it's a pain to carry around, then you're not gonna wanna take it with you anywhere. Does it come with a travel case? Is it durable? Uh, and that goes into build quality, which is super important. The build quality isn't just how well it's put together, but also what materials it's made of, which then goes factors into the weight of the item. Is it carbon fiber? Is it aluminum? Is it made of steel? Is it a bowl or a flat base? And that also applies to the fluid head. The tripod can accept either a flat base so you can screw the fluid head on, or is it a 75 millimeter bowl or is it a 100 millimeter bowl? Uh, once you start getting into serious tripods, they all accept different types of fluid heads. Also, there's bowl adapters. So if you have a 75 millimeter bowl accepting tripod, but you have a flat base fluid head, you can get an adapter to use that flat base fluid head on the you know 75 millimeter bowl. Does it have a spirit level? And is it easy to see? Does it have pan or tilt brakes? How fluid is it? And is it actually a fluid head? And I'll get into an example of what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Does it have different drag steps or counterbalance steps? And what quick release plate does it use? My experience might not be the same as yours and I might have different needs than you. Uh, I'm not gonna be spending more than $3,000 on a tripod kit. I just need a good solid tripod that is gonna carry most of the cameras that I use, which will probably be up to a red type camera package. I want it to be really fluid and I want it to be adjustable and I want it to not be a pain to use. I want it to be somewhat lightweight and last me forever. And that's where we're gonna start looking at the first tripod that I ever bought, which was this guy. This is the Vanguard Alta Pro. What's the model number? 263AT with a pistol grip ball head. And I thought when I first bought this tripod that this was the perfect tripod for me. Squeeze the grip, position the thing, and then you're done. And it also has a little spirit level in there, but you can only see it if you've removed the quick release plate. And this quick release plate is custom to this tripod. When I first got into photography, it didn't really bother me because I had no experience with other adapters, other accessories and things that I needed to mount my camera on. I didn't know any better. I didn't know any different. This worked fine for me. And if you are only doing photography, this kind of tripod might work for you too. But once I started taking video, I found this tripod was seriously lacking in a lot of areas. It's about $160. Packs up pretty well. It's pretty lightweight. It's made of aluminum. It even has this little thing on the bottom of it that you can use to hang a bag of rocks. So it's really stable if you're trying to get like a long exposure image but there's no fluidity in the head. It's a ball head and it's pistol grip and it just stays that way. Um, it's not really easy to get track motion with it. And I found that once I got into video, it just wouldn't work for me. So after I realized I needed a fluid head and I looked, I wanted to start getting some panning and tilting and tracking shots with a camera, I went and I bought this one, this piece of crap from eBay. The fluid head isn't actually really fluid. I mean, maybe there's some fluid in there, but it feels like it's just that came with a tripod, that's why I got it. I wanted a fluid head tripod kit. It looked like everything else that I've seen. It is pretty heavy, so carrying it around is a pain in the ass. It makes a lot of noise, and it's got these twisty locks that are really not very fun to use because they actually, these things are just 
open and they're really sharp. And so if you nick your fingers on them, you might cut yourself. And these, these twist locks are really, really hard to use. It is a tripod. It will hold your camera and you can get some panning, tilting shots with it, but they're really hard to use and it's hard to keep a consistent speed. And also it's not even fluid. It's just like one big bearing in there. In fact, you can probably hear it. Here's its fluid setting. It just sounds like metal grinding on there. At that point, that was all my experience with fluid heads. And then I start to realize that when you spend $150 on a tripod and then there's options that exist for thousands of dollars, there's probably a quality difference. That being said, this one also costs about $150. It is the iFootage Gazelle and I don't recommend it because it's just, it doesn't hold hardly any weight. If I just barely put any weight on it, this slides in and uh, your camera will fall over. In fact, I've tightened this screw down as tight as it will possibly go. And it's just, it doesn't tighten enough. And so it's kind of a bummer. I wouldn't recommend this tripod to anybody because of that, which is interesting because iFootage also makes the little table tripod that I really love. But the Gazelle tripod series is just kind of garbage. The honorable mention goes to the Manfrotto 502 AH. I don't have one here, but if you're going to spend about 150 bucks on a fluid head, that's the one to get. It's like the de facto standard good value fluid head until you're ready to spend more money. The next tripod kit that we're gonna look at is the Sackler ASM. It is a 75 millimeter bowl tripod. And that's what a proper 75 millimeter bowl tripod kit looks like. You can attach it to other tripods. And this is really where you start to learn that tripods and fluid heads are two different things. The tripod is the sticks and the fluid head is the fluid head. It's just, you can buy them separately or you can buy them in kits, but they're not one and the same and you can pair different brands. This is a Sackler fluid head. And this is a Manfrotto tripod. This tripod is the Manfrotto 546B legs, which you can get for 530 bucks. And the ASM fluid head doesn't generally sell by itself. It usually sells in a kit with uh, Sackler legs and that kit is around $720. Uh, I recently saw a deal zone item for the Sackler ASM with the Sackler legs, and that was uh, 450 bucks. So sometimes you can find them on sale at B&H's deal zones. And that's actually how I bought the Flowtech legs, which we'll get to in a minute. The only other option I would suggest to save money on equipment in general is Cinekit List. There's a link to it in the description of this video. After I bought my Flowtech legs, they ran another uh, group buy, which is what they do. They have a list of you know tens of thousands of people who buy gear and wanna save money on gear. They'll blast out an email to everyone saying, if we get to this many commitments or this many people want to go in on the group buy, then we'll get this level of discount. And usually they fill out the maximum discount right away. And it's like, between 20 and 40%. So they were selling the Flowtech legs and pretty much everything in Sackler's inventory for like 35% or it was like 30% to 35% off, which is how I got the Ace XL fluid head, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, Travis over at Cinekit List sent that one out to me to talk about because I already bought the ASM and the FSB8 and I was gonna compare those and I wanted to see if the Ace XL was a, was a good in-between of the two. What do you get when you spend $500 on tripod legs as opposed to a hundred bucks? Well, for one, they hold a lot more weight and they're significantly more sturdy. The latch mechanisms are generally a lot more reliable, a lot easier to use. They're safer. You're not going to cut yourself on them just by using them. The mid-level spreader is a little bit more bulky and it actually does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't look like it's going to fall apart. The build quality is a little bit higher. The feet have interchangeable feet options, which this one has rubber feet that come off. And then we have spikes that we can use for like dirt. And they generally go on pretty easy. And now we have flat feet again. When you have several thousands of dollars of camera equipment, you don't want to put it on a hundred dollar pair of legs because if one of your legs on your cheapo tripod fails when you have thousands of dollars of camera equipment on it and you're not right next to your camera, then your camera can hit the ground. That's what you get for not spending an appropriate amount of money on your tripod. Now, if you have a small mirrorless camera or something like the GH5 or the A7S III or something up to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K series, then the ASM is probably your, your best bang for the buck for an entire kit when it's on sale. This is the first fluid head I've ever seen that actually would allow me to do something like this. 
you have different drag settings and you have counterbalance settings. Counterbalance settings are what make your camera go from like this to this really easily. And then you can set the drag level so it'll go slower or faster. So adjusting these things between just the fluid head can make it really easy to get these nice smooth panning shots or really quick tracking on either the pan or the tilt axis. And then you can also do some really cool things like what I did recently where I actually rigged a whole bunch of stuff onto the ASAM fluid head and got this awesome parallax rotation shot. But I wouldn't have been able to do that with something like the cheapo tripod, which sounds like grinding metal, or the gazelle tripod, which would have fallen apart if I had tried to mount that much stuff to it. So the ASAM is the first fluid head that I've experienced. And then the day after that, I saw another deal on uh, another set of Sackler sticks, which is where I picked up this baby. Sackler Speedlock 75 carbon fiber, not the head. This this one was sent to me by Cinekit List. But the legs, these legs are of an entirely different category than the Manfrotto legs that I just showed you. These ones are made of aluminum. They're kind of heavy. They have a lot of great features. It's two stages, meaning we've got one, two, but we've got a single latch for both the stages. Now I thought that only the Flowtech had that, but the Speedlock CF75 was around longer than the Flowtech. The Flowtech is a new innovation, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this one has that, and this one is super, super lightweight. It's very easy to get this thing around and move it around, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's a very thin little tripod. And when I pull up the mid-level spreader, it just stays right in the center. It doesn't flop around. On the Manfrotto one, when I try and collapse the legs, this mid-level spreader flops around everywhere. This one, which is lightweight, easy to deploy, has the single latch mechanism, which I love. We've also got the detachable rubber feet with the spikes, which admittedly are much more difficult to reapply <clears throat> to the legs. I generally never take them off, so it doesn't bother me too much. So that was my favorite tripod for a long time. So the key differences between the Ace M and the Ace XL is the Ace XL is rated for more weight. Also, the Ace M, the lowest setting of counterbalance, it won't move. It's uh, completely, it's completely dead. It'll stay wherever you left it. But the Ace XL, because it's rated for more weight, uh, at its lowest counterbalance setting, it will still drift up uh, with very, very low weight on it. But that's again because it's rated for more weight. If you have weight on it, it's probably not going to drift. The Ace XL has an illuminated spirit level, and instead of six counterbalance steps, it has eight. Beyond that, the two are pretty much the same, but the Ace XL seems like it's put together just a little bit better. That illuminated spirit level feels like it really adds a nice touch. Honestly, just get the one that you can afford and also is rated for the weight of your camera. If you get a fluid head that has a weight rating outside of what your camera is, then it's not gonna work for you. And then I finally picked up the Flowtech. At the same time, I also bought the FSB-8 a well-known tripod fluid head, and it holds pretty much everything that I could possibly need between three pounds and like 22 pounds. If you go down to the FSB-6 and the FSB-4, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Sackler. They didn't pay me, they wouldn't work with me. So the FSB-8, FSB-6, FSB-4, they're all very, very similar. The only real differences are the weight limits that they can hold. This one has a spirit level that actually illuminates so you can see it in the dark. We've got 10 different levels of counterbalance. We got five different levels of drag. It has a side load mechanism, which I thought was kind of gimmicky, but actually it's super handy and I use it all the time. It's uh, the nicest fluid head I've ever owned. It's extremely smooth. I can't say enough nice things about this fluid head. If you want to get the best fluid head, this is the best fluid head that I've ever owned. Something I didn't like about the ACE series, the ACE M and the ACE XL, is when you put the brakes on completely, it still just barely kind of moves if you torque it, which it, not even a whole lot. It's just a tiny bit of torque and it will move up and down. The Ace XL does it too. The Ace XL actually does it a little bit less. 
and it takes a little bit more force, but it will happen. And it doesn't matter how tight you torque it down, there's just that tiny little bit of looseness, which it just seems like for $500 plus of fluid head, you would get uh, better performance out of that, where if you put the brakes on, it's just not gonna move at all. Uh, but I get that with both the Ace XL and the Ace M, so it's not unique just to the Ace M. Now that's only if you're torquing it while the brakes are on. And the only time that's become a problem for me is when I have a slider on the fluid head going from the back of the fluid head to the front of the fluid head, like this. And then I'm sliding from the back to the front. When I've got the camera on there, that weight will cause the whole image to shift, thus ruining the slider shot. So because of that, the Ace M and the Ace XL were not fitting my personal needs in the fluid head market. Because I just wanted to have one tripod and one fluid head that I could put any camera on and it would work. It wasn't because of the quick release plate. It wasn't because anything else. It was just because the slider and the camera were exceeding the weight limit when the camera was on either end of the spectrum of that particular fluid head. So if you need ultimate quality, the FSB-8 was what I went with and that's what I have to use. Now this is the last tripod that I think I'll ever have to buy for a few very simple reasons. One, the latches are up here finally and that's it. It's packed up. Uh, super easy to pack up. These latches are extremely convenient to deploy. Mid-level spreader works just the way that it's supposed to work. We've got a rubber handle here that makes carrying it and moving it around really easy because if you've got a camera mounted up here, you don't want to carry your tripod around or reposition it by carrying the camera. That's bad for the camera, the connecting plate, the quick release plate, the fluid head. Uh, you want to carry it by the tripod. So this handle makes it really convenient. Also, it makes it easy for moving the tripod from place to place. It has magnets. These are stuck together really, really well. So it's not gonna deploy without you actually pulling it apart. They're really good magnets. It's just, it's just such a solid kit. It's carbon fiber. It's completely weatherproof. I mean, you can take this into the ocean. You can take it into a swamp. You just hose it off when you're done with distilled water, uh, particularly if you take it into a salt water environment because salt destroys everything. This thing can get super low down to the ground. It's the best tripod. Now there are other bigger tripods you can buy for super huge cameras that weigh hundreds of pounds. This is not that. This one will only hold like 45 pounds maybe. It'll carry every camera that I'll ever throw at it. It will survive any environment that I'll ever be in. These latching mechanisms are a lot easier to remove than the previous Sackler uh, CF speed lock legs. They go on and off, super easy. It just works and it's not gonna break on me. It's, I can trust my camera equipment with it. Uh, so that's the best of the best. And if your tripod comes with some kind of bag, uh, generally goes without saying, the more you pay for the tripod, the better bag you'll get. This is the Vanguard bag, which is basically like a thin piece of nylon, which I guess would work to hold some rocks and then attach it to the bottom of the tripod as a little sling. Um, but beyond that, it's not really going to protect any gear. This is the one from the Manfrotto. It's got a little bit of padding. It's got some Velcro straps to actually hold the legs in place so they don't flop around. It's got an extra zipper to carry some instructions, I guess, which I've never actually looked at before. Uh, but it will actually protect your legs from some bumps and bangs. And then we move up to the Sackler. This came with the Speedlock CF75 legs over here. We've got the floor spreader in there. Like this nice red velvety material. It tells you what side to put the fluid head on if it's attached. It's much, much thicker padding all around. It seems like it would protect all of your equipment much, much better. The Flowtech 75 legs, those didn't come with a bag because I didn't pay for it because it's expensive. If you're gonna be getting legs, just check the description to see if it comes with a bag if you need to transport to places if you're gonna take it on a plane with you. It just makes it easier to keep track of things if they come with a bag. What I wanna demonstrate is this tripod is trash. This tripod is trash. This tripod didn't fit my needs. We'll never use it again. This tripod, I don't like that it's super heavy, has two different stages of lock, and it's also the mid-level spreader is kind of wonky and gets all over the place. So this tripod, I'm not gonna use anymore. I'm only gonna be using these two tripods moving forward 
if I'm using a tripod. This video was taken on my slider setup on a rolling stand and then on a magic arm clamped to my desk. Manfrotto also sells a magic arm, but Impact from b &H Photo also sells their version of the magic arm and it's just the same quality, it's just cheaper, so I'm using that. So you might not even really need a tripod, but if you do need a tripod, instead of wasting this much money on crap, figuring out that it's not gonna work for you, you should just save all that money and invest it into a tripod kit that might actually work for you from the get-go, like the Ace M series, or if that's not gonna work for you, or if your camera setup is too heavy for that, then save up and get the Get what you actually need. Uh, don't waste money on a bunch of crap that is just gonna not work for you. Hopefully this video just helps you understand why tripods can cost so much money. They're made with the right materials. They're made, uh, they're, they're designed appropriately. They have certain features that make it easier to get the shots that you want to create, like with the slider or those panning and tilting movements. Or if you have a really heavy camera, it's not just gonna flop over. It will actually counterbalance appropriately. And also a little tip for tripods, you're not actually supposed to put any weight on the mid-level spreaders, but I found the mid-level spreader on the Speedlock CF75 will take a 15 pound sandbag just fine. And it will make moving the fluid head around with the maximum amount of drag really, really super smooth. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that with any other tripod, but the Speedlock CF75's mid-level spreader, it works really, really well for that. There's links to the ones that I would recommend you actually get. And if you like the music that I used in this video, there's a link to get two free months in the description. If this video was helpful to you, uh, just give me a like. That's all it takes, I appreciate it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.